Hey guys, I'm Nick of Back Pocket Game Reviews. Uh, this is not my channel, but I'm doing a video here for you for Proto Mario, which is pretty exciting for me because I'm a pretty big Proto Mario fan. But what are we going to talk about today, guys? Why you should never work at GameStop. But Proto, sorry, I don't have a tagline, so I've, I've been dying to use that at some point in time, uh, and it was more fitting to do it on his channel than mine. Um, but let's start this off. So there is a practice at GameStop called new to used conversions. And what that is is where you take a new product and convert it over to use. So you will open the game, you will slap a used sticker on it, and yeah, now it's a used game. That's not always a bad thing. A lot of times it's games like NBA 2K where you're marking it down because it's a several year old game and now it's going to be cheaper as a used game. However, sometimes it is GameStop's way of manipulating the market, and for example, with Xenoblade Chronicles and the Metroid Prime Trilogy, GameStop had exclusive rights to sell those games. They were selling those games for $50 new. Well, we only had about as many as our pre-orders when those games came out, and then eventually we started receiving these huge shipments of them, like unopened boxes that have come straight from the factory. We would then open those boxes, and we were told to mark them as used for $90. Um, that kind of sucks if you're someone who is a big gamer, because and even if you're not really a big gamer, that should suck for you, because you should realize that your company's doing this to manipulate the market. It's not that this game didn't have a market, it's that I had to tell people we didn't have the game in stock, because we didn't have it, and then all of a sudden they send us huge brand new shipments that they sat on in a warehouse just to manipulate the sale rate of those games. Yeah, that's a pretty scummy practice. Midnight releases. Why would midnight releases be such a terrible thing if you worked at GameStop? They seem so fun, right? So uh, actually you're given like a $20 budget to run a midnight release. My favorite midnight release I ever ran was my Halo 4 midnight release. We had a competition. I had to work with errands to get some free TVs brought in just for the night. We put up advertising for these different companies all around and coupons to drive sales for them. And that doesn't sound that bad, except for the fact I had to do all of this at times where I wasn't at work because normally I was the only manager in the store at open. Yeah, that's pretty terrible, being the only manager. That's a great way to get yourself robbed. Hey, anyone else here in the store? No, I'm by myself. Yeah, that's how robberies happen. GameStop's also a big target for those, by the way. I've done a video about them getting robbed and some of the more interesting robberies they've had. Um, but and it, it is fun to do those midnight releases and see how excited your customers get during them. Um, I had, you know, a cosplayer there, did a full Papakura Master Chief cosplay costume. And I mean, it was a really well done one, had working headlights on the helmet and everything. Uh, the competition was fun. We had the food and everything. But it, I literally spent a lot of time off the clock working on that. And the issue you have is it's going to come down to, sales are going to come down to you. Pre-orders, all of that stuff. So this was for all of my pre-order customers. This drove pre-orders for me. Well, they're going to hold you very accountable for your metrics. I'm sure you've heard of the Circle of Life if you haven't. Again, I've also done a video on that as well. Circle of Life is a program that GameStop uses to essentially rate you as an employee and rate your store. Um, it is based off of a lot of different things, such as your pre-orders, your power-up rewards card sales, um, your new-to-used percentage. Yes, that is something they weigh you on. And that's also another thing that has brought up a lot of bad practices in GameStop. There are a lot of employees, because of how hard it is sometimes to sell used versus new, when GameStop likes to price certain used games as only $5 cheaper than their new counterparts. Yeah, $5 difference. Especially if it's a day one edition that comes with some extra DLC, I'm sure you're probably going to buy the new version. But there's a lot of employees who have gotten caught lying, saying, no, we don't have new copies, just so they could push the used copy to help their own metric. Now, 
the issue with the metric is if you're not hitting them or not performing well, your hours are going to get cut. And if you are a part-timer, you're probably only working a day or two a week anyways, so if it gets cut, you might not be working at all. And GameStop doesn't really like to let you know as a part-timer that they're firing you in advance. You'll, like a month later after not being scheduled, get a letter from corporate saying you've been let go for not, not having worked for a month. So that's, that's kind of terrible. And then, you know, the rewards card that you have to pitch only offers a discount on used games, and I understand used games are GameStop's bread and butter. However, with that being said, I can go into a Best Buy, pay them $30 for two years, and get 20% off of all new games. Or with Amazon Prime, where you get, you know, Twitch Prime as well on top of that, free two-day shipping, a bunch of other benefits, you also get 20% off of new games that you pre-order. Yeah, GameStop doesn't offer any discount on a new game. It's just not something they do because they don't make a lot off of them. Whereas these other companies are doing it to drive sales to them of other products. GameStop can't really do that. Even though if, if they did, they'd probably sell more used games and drive sales a little more in general. So you are going to be held accountable for a lot of things that you might not honestly be able to control. Next up on the list is you're going to have to throw away some boxes. And when I say boxes, I mean game boxes. So I know a lot of you here on Proto Mario's channel like Pokemon, right? Well, at one point in time, we received a message, an email, because you will get emails from corporate when you work in the store. And uh, that email said to throw out all of our DS game boxes. Yeah. So that includes Pokemon Soul Silver and Heart Gold. They wanted us to pitch these. Me being the employee I was, I stored a whole bunch of them in a drawer down below. So if you came in and got Soul Silver at my store, chances are you were still getting a box for Soul Silver. And don't get me wrong, I understand not everyone cares about the box. Some people honestly just don't need one. They might not collect the game. They're just buying it just to actually get to play it finally. But this is also part of the reason why I never wanted GameStop to get into retro games because GameStop doesn't put any value on the box. And to a collector, that box is a huge part of why they are probably buying that game. I, I don't like to buy a game without a box. If I'm, if I'm going to buy a disc game, I want the box. I know that sounds like a petty thing. Honestly, I buy a lot of my games digitally these days, but if I'm buying a physical copy, that box is very important to me, especially if it was a collectible game like Heart Gold and Soul Silver, which they sell used for $50, even though those games were $40 when they came out new. Next up on that list is parents. You're going to hate parents when you work at GameStop for two separate reasons. Some of them will drop their 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13-year-olds off in your store, and some of those kids aren't going to know how to act. It's not always a problem. Some kids are honestly great to have in the store. They're fun to interact with. But I'm not a babysitter. I'm not there to watch your child. Especially when your child asks they need to use the restroom and can I help them. Not something I wanted to do that day nor is it something I feel comfortable doing. Next up, though, for that would also be that you're going to have some parents who are going to ask you how bad the M rating is. You will tell them, and one of two things is going to happen. They're either going to get mad at the kid, thinking the kid knew, and then that kid's going to look at you like he hates you, which that's not a big deal. You're doing the right thing if that's content that kid shouldn't be playing, but the parent should honestly know what's acceptable for their kid or not. Some kids can handle different things that other kids can't. But then your other thing that you could end up having to deal with here is that parent's going to buy it and not listen to you and then call the store or come into the store and blame you when it happens. So... My kid just played Grand Theft Auto V. You didn't tell me this was in there. Ma'am, I did tell you this was in there. I tried telling you what the M rating was for on the game. You told me little Johnny could handle it. But yeah, I've had some parents yell at me before over content in a game, even after being warned. Next up on the list is terrible pay. But this is going to kind of break into two parts. Terrible pay and the stuff they're going to expect you to do. 
GameStop store managers make about $14.50 an hour. I know this because a few of my friends are still GameStop managers. I left after five years with the company as a manager. I left. Stepped down. Gone. I have a video about that as well. But $14.50 an hour is what they currently pay to store managers in my area. Keep in mind, minimum wage in my area is around $8.70. So that's not even doubling the minimum wage. However, they used to pay the store managers around forty dollars to $60,000 a year, depending on how productive your store was and depending on, obviously, your tenure with the company. That's not bad pay. But they say the $14.50 an hour will balance out with how much overtime you will have to work. And when I say overtime, I mean this company is going to expect a lot out of you. A lot more than what most companies are going to expect, especially for the pay that they're giving you. Unless you're a part-timer, if you're a part-timer, you're not going to be working that much. But as a manager, I was in a store manager, two store. That's where you have a store manager who runs one store and your store. I had a store manager for two days out of the week, and I would have to literally open and close by myself one day a week. That sucks, by the way, because I don't get to take lunch. I have to order food, and sometimes you will have customers that will get a little mean with why are you eating in the store, and then you'll have a district manager who might call and go, why are you eating in the store? Well, why am I working from open to close by myself? Because if you think I'm not going to eat in a 12-hour shift, you are drastically wrong. Um, there would be plenty of times where I was working off the clock, as I said, with midnight releases, and it is, it's, it's not going to be demanded, but it is going to be expected, just as a heads up. Um, but hopefully this is eye-opening for some of you who want to work at GameStop. And you might even ask me, well, who wants to work at GameStop? If you saw how many applications we used to get when I worked there, it was a stack. Like a huge stack. And a lot of people would say how awesome the job is. It's not. You're going to wind up with terrible managers who think they're the awesomest thing in the world because they run a GameStop store. I've done a video about that too. Some of my worst managers I have ever had in my entire working life came from GameStop and they are just terrible human beings. You can have terrible managers anywhere, but for some reason they just are like magnets to GameStops. So yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're new to Proto Mario's channel here, don't forget to click subscribe on his channel. He's got quite a bit of good content. You can also thumbs up this video if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to go follow me over on Back Pocket Game Reviews. Pretty sure there'll be a link in the description box for you all to do that. And uh, enjoy your evening. Stay classy, San Diego.